mixed. So on the fighting side, I could hold my own. And uh, so the later on, evidently, I scored the highest on the, the Zen Buddhist exam. That any there were some foreigners there. I had a guy from Sweden, a guy from Canada, or something like that. Uh, but I had scored the highest on the on the philosophical exam, and I did pretty pretty well in the fighting, you know, the sparring and whatnot. So the, the teacher actually wanted me to go to the United States and set up a Shorinji Kempo Academy in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I told him I said I really appreciate the honor and uh, really really enjoy this style. But I have other things to do in my life, and uh, we'll keep in contact. So anyway, he gave me a nice book signed by Doshin. So you know, they actually sent it for Doshin so to sign it. And he signed it. His, his name was Morikawa Sensei. He signed it as well, which is it's, it's a nice memento from uh, Shorinji Kempo. So anyway, I was in Taiwan after that. The next step of my journey was to go to Taiwan. And my friend stayed in, uh, in Japan doing business. So I get to Taiwan, and I meet this guy called Larry Tan. Now Larry Tan is, I guess he's now in New York, and he's been teaching Kung Fu, I guess, for many years. He teaches movie stars and rock stars and things like that, celebrities. Um, anyway, I stayed with Larry in Taiwan and uh, had to start learning a bit of the Chinese language because once again, nobody spoke English. And uh, Larry taught me uh, Northern Shaolin uh, tiger style. Mm -hmm. right? So I was enjoying this new type of uh, movement instead of the more you know, direct Japanese type of movements, this sort of circular type of thing. I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. And uh, I like the, uh, the roughness of the tiger style. It's pretty brutal. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the more brutal of all the animal styles. But uh, anyway, that's maybe the other side of me. <laughs> but, uh, so uh, then one day, Larry said, uh, hey, let's, let's go watch a movie getting produced. He said there are some foreigners in this movie. So uh, I said, well, I'm not really interested in movies because Toei. But why why he get involved in the movie? No, he, he just knew some of the people. Ah, there. okay. He knew some of the people that were acting yes. yeah. in the film. You know, when I was in Japan, Toei uh, Productions uh, looked at my friend and I uh, at, when we were doing karate to see if we'd want to be in one of their films. Uh, I didn't. I didn't want to be in one of them. I wasn't interested in movies. Like my friend did a small part with uh, uh, Yamash, Yamashita Tadashi. I did a small part in one of his movies, but I wasn't interested. In okay, and so it, Taiwan? Huh? After that, Taiwan? Yeah, so I was in Taiwan. So I went to see this movie being shot, and the producer came up to my friend, spoke in Mandarin, and said to him, uh, can your friend fight? My friend said, yeah, he can fight. Ask him if he wants to get punched out by this Bruce Lee lookalike called He Zhong Da. Right? And so Larry asked me, and I said, why would I want to do that? And Larry said, well, he'll pay you. Well, how much is he going to pay me? So he offered me some money. I figured, hmm, it was pretty cheap to live in Taiwan at the time. But how, how much uh, did he get for the, for the role? I mean, compare it. Well, I think the... It wasn't a role. I was just going to get beat up. Oh, like a stunt person? Yeah, like a stunt person. Just get beat up. And I think it was like a thousand Taiwan dollars. What's okay. that? A thousand Taiwan dollars is not a lot. It's about uh, 50 US. 50 US. 50 US dollars. Okay. But a thousand Taiwan dollars, I looked at it in terms of food uh -huh. and living. Uh -huh. I could live for probably a month on that. Okay, okay. And, That's uh, good. In Taiwan, so I figured. That's a pretty good deal. I can stay here longer. I don't have to use any of my reserves. Okay. You know, just again. So I got punched out. And then uh, and then a little while later, the producer contacts Larry and says, please call your friend over and wonder if he wants to do a speaking role. 
Okay. I said, but I'm dead already. <laughs> right same movie. Yeah, same movie. <laughs> what? So I asked him, how's that possible? He says, well, the, the audience is Chinese. They're not going to know the difference between them. We'll just put you in some different clothes. I was, well, all right. Well, those may be some benefit of Yeah. Different clothes, that's all. So anyway, I did, a, I did one scene, a speaking scene. I figured, okay, that's the end of that movie. They paid me more money for that. Right. So that was better, nice. Better wages, right? Yeah, better wages. So I figured, all right. And uh, I had acted on stage when I was younger. And I wasn't a very good actor, but I did, you know, I had some familiarity with acting. And uh, so anyway, he comes back, I guess, I don't know, 10 days later and says to Larry, he says, would your friend like to be a bad guy in this film? And I'm thinking, what kind of script is this? <laughs> They're writing it as they go along. You know, so they had me do this fight scene with He Jong Dao, which I had a hell of a hard time with, because if somebody is throwing punches and kicks around me, you know, my response is to okay. take them out. Yeah, it's something different, right? Yeah, it's different than, you know, the movie, and the real movie you know, you don't hit anyone, so your distancing, your timing has to be different, you got to follow a cadence and all that sort of thing. I wasn't familiar with that, so I was really struggling with trying to trying to pull this thing off. Anyway, the film later on was a success. To all of our big surprise. <laughs> right? uh, but by the time it was a success, I was already in Australia. And uh, so the... Bush. Huh? Bush. Yeah, out, the, continue. out in the outback. Yeah. yeah. As in, that's another story, being in Australia. I'll, I'll keep to the martial arts. Yep. Although there is, there is a martial arts story in Australia. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll come back to that some other time. So anyway, Lan Tian Hong calls me back to Taiwan to do another movie with him. He was not able to pull that off, but at the time, Huang Zheng Li was staying in Lan Tian Hong's apartment. Yeah, where did that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. He was staying in Lan Tian Hong's apartment, so I would go over and uh, visit Huang Jin Li. Huang Jin Li couldn't speak any English and very, very limited Chinese, so we used sign language. And I, he tried to pick up some English, we both tried to pick up some Chinese, and we did drawings and all kinds of things. And we initially, we talked mostly about martial arts. And uh, I realized that this guy was really brilliant. You know, because I have a, a physics background, and uh, I ended I realized that he was talking about biophysics or biomechanical, biomechanical operation of the body. And uh, so of course that interested me. And uh, that's when I, I asked him, I said, do you ever teach anybody? And he says, no. He did teach one guy in Korea uh, before that, and of course when he was in Vietnam. So he is already champion, right, in Taekwondo? Huh? He's already winning a champion, uh, championship, no? Not really? I don't know if he had, uh, if he had won, a, won a championship, but uh, Huang Jin Li later on became pretty big in the Taekwondo okay. world. Uh, I might have had a little bit to do with that, and his movies might have had a little bit to do with that. Uh, but he was teaching in Vietnam. He was part of the Tiger Division in Vietnam. And of course, they use Taekwondo for it real purposes. But uh, so I became interested and then uh, I asked him, I said, would you mind showing me a few moves of that? And he said, yeah, I can do that. And then basically he started teaching me. And uh, so he taught me, uh, taught me for a while and then we got this gig. It wasn't Lan Tian Hong, it was somebody at Lan Tian Hong Lu called Li Man Yu. And uh, Li Man Yu was associated uh, with Wen Suya, Wen mm -hmm. Suya. So we did a snowball connection, and uh, that was with Yuan Heping as the uh, fight choreographer. Right. So I got to meet Yuan Heping and uh, work with him. That was also a lot of fun. So snuff bottle connection is done. You know, okay. it's, it's in the can. 1978, right? 1978. Uh, that was 77. 77, okay. Yeah. So it's yeah, 77. 77 yeah. So the way I had worked things is I had an airplane ticket. That, to Australia, uh, right? 
Oh, no, I had an airplane ticket that I bought that was returned to Canada. Uh, you know, to, to go back to Canada. But you were originally from the U.S., right? Originally from the U.S., but uh, you know, I didn't return to the U.S. for many, many, many years okay. after that. So anyway, so I had this return trip. I was going to go back to Canada, maybe Vancouver, potentially even back to the Arctic. I wasn't sure. And uh, I was a backpacker at the time, so I had my Kelty pack all packed up, ready okay. to go. And I was getting on the flight uh, the next, I think it was late morning or something like that. And then I get a phone call from Wang Jing Li. And Wang Jing Li says, Roy, come. <laughs> come where? Hilton Hotel. Why? Hong Kong producer wants to see you. <laughs> I said, for what? He says, just come. Well, and uh, so out of respect for Wong Jing Lee, I went. It was my last night in Taiwan. So I met uh, Lu Xiyun in the Hilton Hotel. But you already know him, right? From the yeah, Snuffball I, Connection, right? Yeah, Snuffball Connection, I met him once. Oh, oh I met Lu Xiyun with Li Man Yu together. Okay. At the time that Li Man Yu hired me. Because I guess at that time, Lu Xiyun had already had discussions with Lee Yu about maybe putting me in the film because if the previous film is successful, you know, that means I've got some, some screen, sequel. <laughs> I've got some screen something uh, following oh, appearance, okay. Okay. you know, I've got exposure, okay. the word is exposure. Yeah. So that's probably what they were thinking. Um, so anyway, I meet him in, in, in the hotel and he says, uh, I said, well, what's this about? And he says, uh, I've decided, I have the distribution of Snuff Bottle Connection in Hong Kong, and I've decided to do a publicity stunt to promote the film. I said, okay. And he says, the publicity stunt is we put out in the newspaper a challenge to anyone in Asia, saying that Huang Jin Li could kill anyone in less than two minutes, and that uh, they were gonna stage a fight to the death. And he says there were a number of people that applied, and we selected one guy who's like the all Asian full contact champion. It's illegal, guy. right? It's illegal. Well, okay. I asked, I asked him that question. I said, "Well, isn't this illegal?" He says, "We're going to shoot it as a documentary at Golden Harvest Studios." Okay. And uh, and I and I looked at Huang. I said, "Huang, you going to do this?" Huang said, "Yeah, no problem." Sure, no problem. He didn't, he didn't, uh, wasn't bothered with it. And I said, well, why are you talking to me? <laughs> okay, right? Yeah. Well, then he says, he says, well, you're Huang Jun Li's student. I said, yeah. He says, well, I want you to fight the guy first. I went, what? Yeah. <laughs> I said, why would you want to do that? And then all of a sudden it struck me that I was expendable. I was expendable, and the other thing, it would give Huang Jun Li an opportunity to see how this guy fights. So in other words, he was hedging his bets, uh, you know, risk management. And I said, well, will this thing really go forward? He says, well, probably not, but we have to be prepared in case it goes forward. And I said, well, what's in it for me? He says, well, I understand that you're, because I told him, I said, my, I'm leaving tomorrow morning, airfare. Yeah. Lost ticket. Yeah, lost ticket. He says, "Okay, I'll give you another ticket." I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> and, uh, and then he says, "Well, if you do it for me, he says, I'll try to put you in my next movie." So I'm thinking, this is the most shit deal I've ever heard in my life. There's no payment. You know, if I live, maybe I'll get into a movie. If I die, you know, there's going to be no movie, and and the airfare I won't be able to use anyway. Well, and, what's uh, guy, so. so, but. You got to remember, I lived in the Arctic. Absolutely, and that I was, will, yeah. And I had, a, I had a massive ego. So it's like a kid stuff. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> all right, you want me to kill some guy? I don't think I would really kill him, but because I, I still don't have that in my heart to do. But you know, I would probably mess him up okay. you know, if I was in that situation where I had to fight him. Anyway, so so I told uh, I told NG, I said, all right. I'll do it. Huang Jin Li was very happy because I think Huang Jin Li wanted me to stay around oh, okay. in Asia. Yeah, yeah. You know, he had something in his mind for me. And well, him. team of friends, right? Yeah, friends and yeah. whatever. He didn't want to see me bugger off. And uh, 
So anyway, so next thing I know, I'm on a plane to uh, to Hong Kong, and uh, of course the fight to the death didn't go forward, uh, although we were prepared for it. And uh, the reason it didn't go forward is the only thing that could stop it was a complaint to the police. We didn't complain, but the other guy, the opponent's wife, complained. And so we went there to uh, for this fight. Police. And there was a lot of police and a lot of uh, tri triad guys there, because the guy evidently was triad associated. Okay. Uh, the the opponent. So anyway, the fight to the death. Fine. Okay. Snuff bottle connection does all right in the marketplace. Hong Jia and I are hanging out. We're still practicing together and uh, doing some more crazy stuff in our practice. And uh, then NG calls me into his office one day. He says, well, I got this film that I'm going to shoot with a new guy. Now I know why the NG acronym came to the, <laughs> to the industry. <laughs> <laughs> From NG. <laughs> yeah, NG is, we see it as a NG. People can't pronounce mm. You know, so NG became his, uh, his, his name. Yeah. Anyway, okay. so he says, we got a new guy, you know, we want to do, uh, we don't want to do a film, and I'd like you to play a role.